Fam, hope you guys are doing awesome today. I got a video here. We're gonna be finding out what led this blind Catholic woman to accepting the religion of Islam. Imagine you are blind. You just Imagine. found your calling in a new faith, but the one thing trying you to that faith has not been developed in Braille. How would you learn about that faith? Well, today. We will tell you the story of Yadira Tabitha and how she saw light in Islam despite being blind. Yadira Tabitha is a Puerto Rican woman born and raised in a practicing Catholic household. She was also born with an anomaly known as congenital glaucoma and it caused her to lose her eyesight completely at birth. Yadira so was raised by her grandmother. They attended church every Sunday and she went to catechism classes where she would learn about the Catholic faith. She also did the First Communion, which is a vital part of a Catholic child's religious upbringing. Since Yadira was the only person in her family to be born blind, her grandmother really did not know how to make the world more accessible to her. But she knew that Yadira just had to learn to live with it because there was no cure. So adapting to the world around her became Yadira's best skill and being independent was her best strength. Yadira mapped out her two-story home in mine, learned how to swim in a 12-foot pool without wearing water wings, oh. and this is just scratching the surface. However... When it came to the real world, other people were not ready to accept her with her special abilities. Instead, all they saw was her disability. While in kindergarten, Yadira really wanted to go try the jungle gym, but her teachers said no. Of course, they would say no. Saying it was too risky. Yeah. But she had just been playing out in the playground with the other kids. And if they got to try the jungle gym, she could too. When the teachers got busy, she tried it and came back down without a hair out of place. She had faith she could do it. Yadira's grandmother then took a chance and enrolled her into public school, where she was mistreated again. And it led to her teachers being suspended on the complaint of Yadira's grandmother. Besides school, Yadira also had to deal with the fact that she did not have much of a relationship with her parents. She had never met her father and did not get along with her mother. All she had was her grandmother. But she also had faith. So when Yadira turned 17 and her closest friend passed away in a horrible car Gosh. accident, she was absolutely struck with shock. She started thinking about death and that there must be more to life than just having fun. Not to mention, Yadira also lost her light perception, which was the only thing that had allowed her to make slight visual sense of the world. She started going to church every Sunday, connected with her community, and even got an offer to teach catechism classes. Then she graduated high school and learned that there was a program offering the visually impaired a look into how college life is going to be like. Yadira entered and this was where she befriended Nadir, a Palestinian Muslim who was also legally blind. Oh. Occasionally, the topic of religion would come up and being her curious inquisitive self, Yadira would ask him all sorts of questions. Not to rattle him, but to clear her confusions about her own belief. You see, Yadira had always been a practicing Catholic and was knowledgeable enough to teach a religious class at 17. But she also had questions that no one could answer. For one, she wanted to know why her cousin, a little baby who could not even hold his own head up yet, needed to be baptised. They said it was to remove all his sins. She could not understand how an innocent soul could incur any sins yeah, like, without any actions. Do? 
And it was just born. does that mean even a baby would go to hell if he dies? Yadira was deeply disturbed by this. Then it was the routine confession, where she would have to go to church, sit in a booth, relate any and every shameful things she had done to a man, and after that, hear that she had been absolved. Yadira felt violated. She couldn't understand how another flawed human being like her could absolve her of her sins. Hmm. It was Good something question. she could never get over. When Yadira asked Nadir about baptism, she was quite surprised to hear that in Islam there was no such thing as baptism, but there was forgiveness. When she was asked a Muslim's way of repenting, imagine her shock when he said they prayed directly to Allah. There was no confession, no prescribed sins, and on top of that, a promise of forgiveness was given by Allah Almighty, even if a Muslim's sins were as much as the foam in the sea. SubhanAllah. With this in mind, Yadira started to really look into Islam, asking questions of all sorts, and to answer, Nadir would bring Yadira audios upon audios. Oh yeah, she they couldn't was watch an any videos or anything. She wanted to read the Holy Quran. At this point in time, less than 5% of the world's books had been translated into English Braille, and unfortunately, the Book of Allah wasn't one of them. At 20, Yadira got diagnosed with thiasis, an autoimmune condition which worsened her eyes and she had to be scheduled for a number of surgical procedures so she could get prosthetic eyes. Her first surgery went downhill, and she was left struggling for her life. In her dream state, she vaguely heard her grandmother panicking for the doctors as her vitals dropped, and when she became stable, all Yadira could think about was what would have happened if she had died as a non-Muslim. Subhanallah. Six weeks later, Yadira Tabitha, a woman who had yet to pick up the Holy Quran and had only learnt about Islam from audios and friends, said her shahada and officially became a Muslim. Her second surgery, six weeks after, went smoothly and she knew she had done the right thing. Later, she also married Nadir. However, Sister Yadira's acceptance of religion was not short of any challenges. She faced quite a bit of backlash from family, which she dealt with in the best way she could. But she also had to deal with the fact that there wasn't much accessible to her in the Muslim community. Her guide dog, which behaved as her literal eyes, was not allowed near the masjid, mm. and she had very little material to read. Now, Yadira was not one to back down after hearing no. So, ten years and four babies later, she found a community that truly welcomed her whole, and she established Islam by Touch, a digital Islamic library wow. full of e-books on Islam. It also funds the production of the English translation of the Holy Quran in Braille to help over 50,000 blind Muslims. Subhanallah. Their personal journeys encourage them to start a non-profit together, Islam by Touch, the first North American Muslim organization working to provide English Braille Qurans and Islamic resources to the blind community. May Allah bless Sister Yadira and their team with all the help they need and allow us to support them better. Ameen. Thank you brothers and sisters for watching this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and share this video with your loved ones. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A lot of us, like myself, have visual aids like glasses, maybe contact lenses. Some of us get laser eye surgery, you know. For the most part, a large population on the planet, they have some sort of eyewear or some sort of thing that's off with their eyes. That in and of itself is one thing, but just imagine being blind. 
Like you cannot see, maybe it's just vague shadows. And you know, this woman, just what she's been through, like her life story, literally, this could be a movie, you know, maybe a TV series, you know, growing up uh, blind and you know, her eyes getting worse and everything and her just being so in, in the sense that she believed that, hey, she can do anything. She can play on the playground as a, as a child and you know, she can teach and whatnot. And wow, it, it's great. You know, she's married now and everything. And it's very easy to overlook the blind community. You know, there's over 50,000 blind Muslims, they're saying. And it's like, people say, well, yeah, read the Quran or watch this video. Okay, but if you're blind, then, you know, how would then a Muslim read the Quran? It's so easy to just overlook them. But with this now, she's able to reach a, a group of people that was largely forgotten. Like, be honest, how many of you were thinking about blind Muslims or, or, or blind people in general? Like, it just doesn't really cross our minds. Like, we worry about, oh, I can't do that, I can't do that. But hey, there, there's people that can't see at all. At least you can see, you're watching this video. Some people can't, they don't have that privilege. So it's amazing to see that she is going out there and she's making a difference with so many other people. And really that's the beauty of life. The beauty of life, making an impact in the world, helping other people to see, you know, that is, that's amazing. That's what religion is all about. That is excellent, very inspiring video. And yeah, really hope her family comes around too and uh, continuously embraces her. But hey, she has a large family now, four children, maybe more to come, who knows? So yeah, this is the type of person who regardless, doesn't matter to me what their religious background is, doesn't matter to me what country they were born in, doesn't matter to me what gender you identify with, whatever. You're going out there, you're striving to be a better person, you're helping people, you're making a difference. That, to me, is beautiful. So guys, really hope that this video was inspiring to you. And if it was, leave a like, share your comments and thoughts down below, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Later.